Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be looking at the grappling techniques that we do on a daily basis and just to remind you of how destructive they can be but at the same time what amazing options we have in terms of subduing someone and keeping them unharmed until the right backup shows up. Again, this is a gentle reminder that what we do is very effective and very dangerous even quote sports judo and sports jujitsu so we're going to be looking at two instances uh, the first one is going to be a man that's trying to control someone a troublemaker until backup shows up so if anyone knows a little bit more about the story please share down below notice how he's tying his arms one with his legs and the other one lacing his own arm just calmly caps his own gets his own hat and just does not harm the man sure he's controlled but he does not harm him but let me show you what you actually can do with this position in a way that can be you know irreversible and possibly even deadly so this is Goodridge in the early days of the UFC just sheer brutality and look at what you can do with this position and yet that man chose to stay calm and subdue him and wait for law enforcement or whoever to take control of the situation very gr amazing decision by the man and great attitude and this is how these skills should be used in my opinion now this is in the old days of judo it was called jigoku jime or hell's strangle now it is grouped under the official name okuri eri jime or sending collar strangle or sliding collar strangle so there's many ways you can do it you can use the leg to push on the head you can use the lapel to push it away from you or you can use the other lapel to actually pull it towards you so there is many things you can do or here for example even before you can go to the ashi gatame then you can switch to this strangle by catching the arm almost like you're trying to go for juji gatame but here you actually grab the far lapel pull it towards you and push the head with your leg now the second one is i'm sure you've seen it it's the nate diaz guillotine that he used uh, honestly he, probably he was intoxicated i'm not entirely sure but I, I don't have a problem with you know again controlling someone but it was the way that he let him go and if I'll share the Instagram post that the Gracie Jiu Jitsu instructors uh, handle it you can see it in its entirety and he just lets him go without just laying him down and that can cause a lot of damage to the head because he's unconscious he's just gonna slam the concrete with his head and possibly have irreversible damage now Fortunately, the man is okay. He even does a post about it. Apparently, he's well known also on social media. But the good thing is he is okay. But, you know, if you are trying to do such a thing, maybe you're forced to do it, just lay someone down because when they're unconscious, you can't control them. They can't, they're not going to do, you know, a break fault. They're not going to do any of that stuff. So just lay them down gently and just leave the scene because it's very important so again gracie jiu-jitsu instructors showed how the best and safest way to deal with this after they go unconscious now uh, here you see it again but you know there's just so many things that you can do uh, again the first example is the greatest example the man got the person in the crucifixion or the crucifix i'm sorry and just waited there he did not inflict any harm and that was an amazing example of how these skills should be used now this again the great masahiko kimura is demonstrating uh, his own uh, variation of hadaka jimmy or naked choke notice how he grabs his own wrist and the other hand is posted on the shoulder and just retracts his shoulders back and that is sufficient to cause enough you know pressure to get the the opponent to submit so 
Now, there's another thing I want to discuss when it comes to strangles. We often say this, you know, you've seen even, you know, one of the, some of the best black belts online say this, you know, it, it's very merciful because it's not like a kick to the head or like a knee to the head. A strangle, you just, the moment they go unconscious, you just lay them down and there's no damage done to them and uh, whatever. And it's very merciful. And it's one of those things that jujitsu has. But apparently the law disagrees in many states or many countries because apparently Nate Diaz is actually facing a lot of problems with this. Um, it's second degree battery, I believe. And he might even face up to seven years. So please be careful with these things. Even the strangles that we think they are, quote, merciful, you can still face a lot of problems. I believe even here in France, there was laws about uh, judo black belts uh, using their judo on the streets. So maybe I'll, I'll get my hands on it and share it with you. I don't know. But uh, still, you should be very careful when using this stuff. Again, the first example is the best example pinning someone and just making sure as if the moment you let go as if nothing happened to them and that's what you want to do so anything from takedowns and uh, arm locks and strangles and striking just be careful pin is your best option and a takedown that's really you know consider it that's the only way i can put it is your best uh, option I probably should do a series on the takedowns that, you know, get you to the ground for a good pin without causing any type of damage. Maybe I'll do it very soon, but still, you should always be careful because, you know, you don't want to exchange your gi with an orange jumpsuit. This was Shady, and thank you for listening.